shoulder, but I'll be very happy to do it. <laughs> but of course, uh, thank you so much for coming out. And in solidarity, if you will, in brotherhood, sisterhood, we we'll all come together with that same commonality, same reflection, same hurt. It has to stop. As we come, we ask in a very humble way to hear our prayers in our way of life. We ask simple things is clemency to free our native brother. He is a human being. Yes. He is a brother, a father, an uncle, a grandfather of someone of this great nation. As we come together, my prayer is no different than your prayer. Bottom line, we need clemency to free Lena Peltier. We are from all nations and tribes, self-sovereign, self-determined. As we witness every day the atrocities, but yet we want our brother to go home. Release your fear and free Leonard Peltier. Start staring down the face of one. 
and help me and my help me, my brothers and sisters, help me, my good friends. Leonard Peltier remaining in prison, especially now that he has contacted COVID, is a de facto death sentence for a crime that he didn't do, for a crime that he didn't commit. And this is the nature of this genocidal state. The United States government and every settler occupier, this is their intention is to suppress us and to kill us and kill us and our elders, especially if you are someone with a voice, especially if you are somebody who fights for their people. I might be one day a political prisoner. Who knows? Because I have the undying love for my people and the land and all of our relatives. And that's ultimately why Leonard is in there because he was a member of the American Indian Movement and the FBI, FBI threw him away to rot in a cell because he was fighting for our people. And that is ultimately the reason why he is in there in the first place. These feds, these feds have blood on their hands. Leonard isn't the only political prisoner in there. We are asking that we release all political prisoners in every, in every corner of the world where our freedom fighters are convicted for, for demanding a dignified life. But I'm interested to hear what our um, relatives and AIM and the RUC have to say. I'm Cleo. I am a, a member of the Red Nation and a member of the AIM um, Albuquerque. I'm a, um, very honored to be here to speak and give the voice to Lena Peltier, Peltier and um, demand that we get release or hospitalization for um, the unjust that's been done to our brother. He's been um, locked away for way too long and in, in our walks, we're, we, we, we ourselves are very um, lucky to be out here being able to be the voice for Peltier and um, we should rise every morning um, thinking about the political prisoners and for the youth that we need to uh, make a stronghold for them and this is the reason why we do this work on an everyday level. I'm so honored to be with every single one of you brothers and sisters. We demand uh, freedom for Peltier. Free, free, free Peltier! 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 Thank you everybody for being here today because today is a very important day. Today is the day that we're going to stand up and have our brother demand his freedom. I am not going to sit around and wait another day, an hour, a minute because it's been already too damn long. And I'm sorry, this is my voice. I thought I couldn't use it again because I've used it so many times. But it's important that we get this word out and we let people know that we're not going anywhere. We demand his freedom now. His health is at stake. He's an elder. He's got so many health issues going on right now. And this is not how we treat our elders. No human being needs to be treated like this anywhere. So we are sick of their, their lies, their, their bullshit, and the things that they, they, they've already done to him, the injustices, the manipulations, the coherence, all this false, false fight documents, all the things they have done to keep him in there and to, to, to let people to believe that he had done this and he never did. He was never, never proven guilty. And he still isn't. And he, he needs to be free right now. So standing up as a woman, as a mother, as a grandmother, you know, we want him home. That's the bottom line. We just want him home now. So I thank every single one of you. I'm here with my brothers and sisters, all of you. And I'm so, so have such a blessed feeling with every one of you because I know when we go home every morning we have our prayers we have our prayers but today like it was shared it's the same prayer for Leonard for his freedom so thank you for everyone for showing up and being here and being united because this is something cannot that can no longer go on so right on rise for Paltier freedom for Paltier thank you it's good to see all of you out here today uh, for our brother. Uh, and, uh, we get him released as soon as possible. But before I start, uh, I want to thank Andrew Thomas for the prayer this morning. Yeah. Internationally known flute player. Yeah. And I have high respect, respects for him. He belongs to our chapter. 
So, uh, thank you, Andrew. Appreciate yeah, it. But, you know, we're all here for the same reason. And we know what that reason is for. But, you know, I wish there was a bigger turnout, but this is what this is happening nationwide. So he's got a great big back of uh, uh, people, uh, political leaders and whatnot. But right now what's really holding him back, I believe, is the uh, Board of Prisons and the President himself. I don't know what kind of ruling they're going to have about releasing Leonard. Because he does need to go home. His health is in real bad shape. And with the virus going around, I don't know how much longer he'll last, be, especially when he's being uh, um, in solitary confinement with the quarantine, uh, quarantine watch. I don't know if he received his medicine yet, his second shot, to uh, help him fulfill the, uh, to still hang around with us a little bit longer. But I just want to say thank you for being here, for supporting uh, for a great cause. We need to bring it home now before it gets too late. And I just want to say, it, it hurts at times to talk about him. Because you know, you feel the pain and suffering he's done these past years. Where he should have never served one day at that time. But yet we're here, we're still backing him up. And I thank you. Oh. Patrick Brown, I'm uh, from the Nation. I'm setting up this. I don't know, maybe it's going to be a delicious chain. I'm going to go out to here, I should know it. I'm going to buy this chain. But it should be there, I'll give you some of the shot. Yeah, I'll give you some of the shot. I'd like to say thank you for having me here. I'd like to share with you. Real briefly, uh, I was the youngest fighter that day. I was 15 years old in Oglala. It was a horrible day. It was a horrific day. We lost a brother, Joe Stentz. What a kind, beautiful man he was. And I'm sure the two agents too were good people in their own way, in their own family. That day was a very intense day and through the leadership of Dino Butler and Bob Rabadou, I mean uh, Leonard Paltier, we survived that day. It was a day-long shootout where we were running out of rounds and we were completely surrounded by over 300 law enforcement. South Dakota, Nebraska State Police, County Sheriffs, Rio of Indian Affairs, various white vigilantes, and the Goon Squad. There seemed a time there that there was no hope, that we all were ready to die. Everybody was tired, everybody was fatigued. We didn't drink any water that day. We didn't eat. It was a horrible humidity. It seemed like the world was against us that day. It seemed like there was no hope left. So we sat down. Some were so tired that they laid down. Some of us were counting how many bullets we had left. It was so depressing. We all looked at each other, knowing that we were willing to die for each other. And why we were there. And why we set up that camp. And why Leonard Peltier led this warrior group there. The elders had come to Farmington the summer, that summer, that spring. The year before, seven Navos were brutally murdered in racist killings. And Leonard Peltier and others came to Farmington to support the Dene people. 
against the racism in Farmington, which was called the Selma, Alabama of the Southwest. It was there among over 3,000, 3,500 AIM members converged to support the Navajo people. It was there that some elders from Pine Ridge came. They talked to the people and said, we need help. They're killing us up there. They're beating us. They're shooting at us. Our people are being assassinated. We can't go to the BIA police. We can't go to the tribe because they're the ones that are the vigilantes. They're the goon squads. We can't go to the FBI because they're training and arming with automatic weapons, the vigilante group, the goon squad. Where are all the warriors? We need help up there. Guess who spoke first? It was Leonard Peltier. Antis, we'll go up there. Then there began the journey to go up to Oglala. And I was very fortunate to be a part of that. At 15, they were telling me, you're too young, little brother. You can't go. I said, I want to go, man. There was, there was a few of us young people. So we decided that we were going to go up there. While we were up there, a lot of the traditional people came to our camps. A lot of the traditional leaders, the grassroots uh, Lakotas, Oglalas. As we were there, the, the, the movement on the Pine Ridge Reservation became strong. People started shooting back. Wherever there was shootings, our, our brothers went there. So we were a security force. And that's why they came into our camp. We believe that the FBI started building up their numbers there. We believe that this was provoked because of the stronghold there at Jumping Bull Ranch. I'd like to thank the grandparents, Jumping Bulls, for inviting us. On that day, two FBI agents came into that territory and a shootout happened and they lost their lives. And today, even many of us mourn for them. I do. They were human beings. No one ever talks about Joe, who shot him. But all this I want to share with you is that we were there, let, her, let us, for a just cause. He led us there. The traditional people, they wanted to install their own government. Right after Wounded Knee, there was a reign of terror where dozens and dozens of people had gotten killed, assassinated, and beaten, stabbed, and shot at. It was that reign of terror that provoked Leonard and others and us to go up there. While we were up there, the spiritual power of the Lakota people was evident. And we all had ceremonies there. It was a good feeling, good time. So when that day happened, it was a sad day. 46 years later, I'm 61. There's very few of us from that day. There were seven of us that faced over 300 of them. As we were there on the ground, figuring out what we we're gonna do, the sun was going down. What are we going to do? And all of a sudden, an eagle came from the south side. It landed on a tree. When he landed on that tree, the tree went like this. And the eagle was steadying itself. And it stopped. And it took off. It went south. And that tree went like this. That's what Leonard said. Let's go. Let's follow that eagle. And boy, man, we got up. We were full of life again. We were exhausted. And as we were following that eagle's trail, there was a creek. 
instead of going around it, we went straight through that creek. As we were halfway out, we saw the sisters, Jean, Milak, and Lena Funston. And it is true that the women give you power. They give you strength. When we saw them, they filled us, they hugged us, they thanked us, they encouraged us. Let's get out of here. We're with you. We're going to be free from here. And from there, we escape up into the mountains. So I just want to share that with you. I just want to share that day with you. I'd like to do an honor song for all the brothers, the unsung heroes of the American Indian Movement who have passed on. Thousands and thousands of security warriors, brothers and sisters. I'd like to sing this song for Joe Stentz and all the Lakota warriors and brothers of the 70s that are no longer with us. I'd like to sing this song for my brother Leonard, for Dino Butler, Bob Robinson, Baby Aim, Mike Anderson, Wishy Draper, my dear, beautiful, strong sister, Jean, Jean Roach. I'd like to sing this. Matriarchal society. Yeah. For my boss, my leaders were my grandmas, my aunties, my mom, my older sisters. So when the women leaders ask me to do something, I say, How high and how fast? Yeah. So let's continue to honor our sisters and our aunties and our grandmas. For without them, our nations would falter. Our nations would be weak. I just wanted to say that to all of you. The young women, you impressed me. 
the most beautiful way. Thank you for your voice. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for speaking on my behalf, of our people's behalf. May you all grow old, long life and happiness. Thank you and uh, one more thing, I'd like to thank uh, Jim Reynolds, he's a former prosecuting attorney who convicted Leonard. You know, I really want to thank him. There is someone with a heart. There is someone who cares about humanity. Senator Patrick Leahy, who came out with a powerful statement. Jerry Adams from the Irish Republican Republic. Senator Schatz, and all the Native American legislators that joined together asking Leonard to be free. I'd like to thank Carol, Carol Koki, the head of the Better Pelletier Defense Committee. Jean, Bo Jean, Jean Roach, <laughs> former federal judge. Kevin Sharp, who's Leonard's attorney. He's going to be free. We know it. He might be free tomorrow. Maybe next week. But he is free. My grandma told me, son, he's going to be free. He's going to walk back. He's going to walk out of those doors. He's going to go to his land. Believe it. Speak it. Be it. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful story, our elder Norman Patrick Brown. He's taught us so much and has always guided us through this work about Peltier. And I just wanna, I wanna commend him and thank him for all his courage, just at only 15 years old, going out and fighting for all of us. It's beautiful. And I hope that we can continue to walk in his footsteps. This is the sixth year that we've come out um, on this day, or actually on the, on the sixth is when we come out. And we come out every year, sometimes in front of the, the council chambers, and, but usually right here. And we come right here because this is one of the only federal buildings <laughs> where we know these feds are here. And we know that they can hear us. Yep. And we know that when they come out on their lunch break, they're going to have to pass by us, right? We're talking to them. We're talking to these feds because this is what represents the power that keeps Leonard incarcerated. This is what represents the power that keeps Native people down. And so this is why we come out here and we reclaim our space here on Tiwa territory. These are our streets and this is Native land. But as we've been talking, we need to remember that Leonard Peltier represents all political prisoners in their struggles and they acknowledge him just like our, our elder just said, all the way in all the way in Ireland, with the Irish, um, the, the, IR, the IRA, the Irish Republican Party, they acknowledge him, and they're also fighting colonialism. They're fighting for their land, they're fighting for their people who get assassinated by the British, and they have long been in solidarity with Leonard Peltier. They have a mural of Leonard Peltier in Free Dairy. And in Palestine, our Palestinian relatives acknowledge Leonard Peltier. And they acknowledge that his struggle is in line with all of the political prisoners who are still in Israeli prisons today. The fight for Leonard Peltier is a fight for all indigenous people all across the world. And people recognize him as a symbol of that struggle, as a symbol for decolonization, as a symbol of the way people are martyred. When they locked up Peltier, as we just heard that day, there was so many people. And they targeted him. He did not shoot those two feds. He was scapegoated. He was made to be an example of what happens when we rise up. By what they're doing to Leonard, they're trying to break all of our spirit. But here we are over 40 years later, still coming out for him, still hitting the streets. And our hearts are still on fire. Because we're never going to stop fighting for Peltier. We're never going to stop fighting for our people. We're never going to stop fighting for our lands and our water and our children and our elders. Woo! They say it's 
that settler colonialism is an ongoing project, it never ends, and that means our resistance to it is never ending. Yeah. We're simply taking up the fights and the struggles that we've been fighting since settlers first arrived here. And let her know that. And I want him to know that there's still people with all their hearts and their souls praying and fighting every day for you, Leonard. Leonard and every other political prisoner out there, unjustly imprisoned for no reason, made to scare the rest of us from protecting our people. But it's not gonna work. It only ignites us more. Just the other day on the news, Leonard Peltier's lawyer, for the first time I ever heard in my lifetime, boldly proclaimed that Leonard did not kill those two feds. That's right. We need to drop that lie. We need to fight that anytime it comes up because it's Ooh. not true. He said that the, when he saw his case, he was so heartbroken and so disturbed that he immediately decided to represent him pro bono because of the blatant and obvious injustice in his case, because of the way evidence was hidden and fabricated. For the first time that I've seen on national television, he proclaimed that the FBI had been training and working with goon squads and white vigilantes. This is public knowledge that needs to be known. This is something that legally his lawyers are continuing to uphold because it's just the truth. There's absolutely no reason that Leonard Peltier should be behind bars right now. There's no reason. And so for this, we continue to fight. We continue to fight for him and for everybody who's unjustly in prison. We continue to fight for Leonard and for all our people, not only in physical prisons, but everybody who's imprisoned by border town violence. Right? The way we can't even move freely on our own lands. And that's why this st happened. That's why this started. Because we're fighting border town violence. Because Leonard fought border town violence. Because our elders here were fighting border town violence. Since before we were born. And it continues today. When we see the police or the vigilantes harass our relatives. Harass our unsheltered relatives. This is what we're fighting for. And that's why the Red Nation exists. So thank you so much for being with us today because this is a long ongoing fight and I know that we're going to continue to be strong and I think we're even going to be stronger. I feel good things for this year. Yep. I think it's going to be a hot, hot summer like we saw in 2020. Yep. So be prepared and we'll always be here to stand beside you and fight with you. That's why the Red Nation exists. May we pray with all our heart and all our spirit that Leonard gets to return to his beautiful homeland and be with his family, surrounded by love, with his spirits again. May Leonard Peltier be free and may his freedom ring and give hope to all who are wrongfully incarcerated. May Leonard Peltier's freedom give us a push for strength everywhere. Whether we're talking about Palestinian liberation or the liberation of colonized people everywhere. This is what we fight for, and we're strong, even when it's hard, even when it doesn't seem like it, because I know we've been dealing with some dark times. I know people are struggling personally. So let us give some of our strength to Leonard right now. Woo! Thank you. Woo! Free them here, free them there, free, free, Leonard Peltier! Free them here, free them there, free, free, Leonard Peltier! Free them here, free them there, Free them here, free them there. Free, free, let it pass here. Free them here, free them there. Free, free, let it pass here. Free them here, free them there. Free, free, let it pass here. Free them here, free them there. Free, free, let it pass here. Free them here, free them there. Free, free, let it pass here. Free, free, let it pass here. Free, free, let it pass here. Got a bene. Shea, I can really whop if I'm Shea. This is my son. The next generation. And I must talk about discrimination, abuse, racism. This is the country that we have to keep fighting for our people. AIM has started fighting for our health care 
our right of who we are as indigenous people. The government sits there, lies, discriminates us to shut us down from our existence. But you know what? We're still here in our existence. Woo! Because of who we are, what we represent, they keep coming at us over and over again. You don't realize how much people are going to do shit that are tired. We're fed up. I've been discriminated myself. I was sexually assaulted. Don't you know how hard it is? And we're, yeah, we're still fighting for justice for our brother here too. And all these feds sit there, drink their coffee, go back to their families while our brother's still in prison, rotting. Woo. But you know what? I know you can hear me. Woo. Santa Fe, I hope you can hear me too. Woo. Washington DC, I hope you can hear me too, Mr. President. Woo. You have no right coming in in our land and saying it's yours in the first place. The truth is, the truth is we know the truth. That's we right. were exiled from our land, told not we could not leave because of our territory of who we represent and why in our soils, our land of who we are. And you sit there collecting our own money when it should have been ours in the first place. Woo! And that's why we need to keep fighting for our brothers and not give up. We need to keep fighting for our sisters, our elders, our land. Our land is not a dump to bring uranium, trafficking, Woo! all this Woo! stuff. This is not what we're here for. Yep. And we know the truth. But we're going to keep talking. We're going to keep rising up. We're not going to shut up. We're going to keep fighting. I tell you with frustration and anger because I'm still fighting for my voice too. There's still sisters out there who are still fighting out there. And also of the domestic stuff that's going on in the prisons, health, everything's on the line. Every time you sit a meal, you're eating a fancy dinner, feds. We need to set our brother free. But remember, it's being collected every damn day you sit there. I may be a native woman, but you know what? No one's gonna back me down because our brother needs us. Woo! And our family, the next generation on, because you know, I was told my whole life to be quiet, but not anymore. Woo! so fed up. I'm so fed at the way the system runs their game because we know the truth. Our rights has always been established of who we are and you keep taking us of our identity of who we are. No more of that. And I'm telling you now, my identity as a native woman, you cannot erase it. It's in my DNA. This is who we are and that's our brother Leonard. people say they don't know Woo. and my advice to you is go go do your research before you start coming and discriminating and saying stuff right. do your shit before you come attacking us Woo. Woo. you want to do something use your voice useful and stop trying to make things worse for us because you know what we've been fighting we have been fighting ever since we got on this earth Woo. And we're still fighting. Woo! And I'm tired of fighting. Yeah. When is this gonna stop? <laughs> For my next generation, you say that you care, but you know what? Every single time I hear something on the news and everything, another person is being discriminated, put in jail for no wrong reasons. You're not doing your job. I know you can hear me. 
And I'm not afraid to look at you in the face. It's not my fault you sold your soul for money. Yeah. That's our money. This goes for a generation. That's who we talk for our voice. Because of Leonard Peltier, Abe, they have made a way. Now it's the next generation. Let's rise up, brothers and sisters. Continue to fight the fire because we're all fire starters. Thank you. I'm Peter Clark. I, I've been here for a while now. A lot of familiar faces here in the crowd. Let's go, Peter. <laughs> trying to remember the first year we were out here. Some of, the, some of you were here, Mark, 2009. The feds used to come out and ask what we're doing. I think they know what we're doing now. I like to remind them every year, just like all of you, that Leonard's still in prison. 46 years later, we're still fighting for Leonard. This will be the last year we'll have to be here for Leonard. I feel it. I know it. Yep. Yeah. Momentum is building. Some of us thought we were close in 2016. I was one of those fools who thought we were close with Obama. We've never been as close as we are now with the pressure that's built up. Thanks to a lot of people. Thanks to people here, our representatives. Call them our representatives, Stansberry, Ledger, Fernandez, and signed letters along with 10 other people, 8 other people, Gr Representative Grijalba calling for Leonard's release. That opened up a floodgate. We see more and more now. Norman mentioned Senator Leahy, Senator Schatz. Every member of Congress has been briefed fully and recently on Leonard Peltier. What we need, if I can ask you what we need, let you know what we need here in New Mexico. Senator Lujan has told us the last week that, well, his people told us last week that he hasn't seen tribal support, native support for Leonard here in New Mexico. We told him that wasn't true. We also have submitted over 8,000 signatures to him over the years from New Mexico, many of them from tribal communities, tribal people. So I encourage all of you to get your respective organizations, write letters to Lujan. Let him know we hope he gets well. And the first thing he does when he gets out is work to free Leonard Peltier with his uh, with his co-workers on the Senate and Indian Affairs Committee, with the Judiciary and the Indian uh, in the uh, Senate. Send messages to Biden to free Leonard. Biden has a couple of choices. He can grant Leonard clemency. Commute his sentence tomorrow. Leonard's petition for clemency has been pending since July. It should be a pretty quick review. They reviewed it quickly in 2016. They just need to update it. Each time they do a review of Leonard's clemency, the FBI weighs in because the FBI, the DOJ, how can you tell the difference? So that'll happen again this time, but there's powerful voices trying to override the FBI. Your voices are them. Third, second thing we could do might get do to let Leonard out is let him out of the COVID memo. We call it the William Barr COVID memo. It says to send elderly prisoners, those most at risk, home. Should have been done long ago. Now Leonard's suffering with COVID as we speak. Today should be his, depends when they started counting, but today should be his second or third last day in quarantine. No medical, no medical professional has seen Leonard during his time in COVID. They keep him in a housing unit. They call it a medical ward. It's in the housing unit. The guard, his counselor, check on him. But as far as we know, not a medical professional. He needs care. He needs to go to a medical facility immediately. So the second second thing Biden can do is direct the BOP to let it out under the CARES Act, under the William Barr memo. Third way he can let him out. Compassionate release. Every time Leonard files for compassionate release with the BOP, they deny it. You're where you are. They say, you're not that bad. You'll live another day. People like Leonard who were sentenced before 1987, they can't take a denial of BOP compassionate release to the courts. This was an error, an overlook in the First Step Act. Norman, I, and others, we've been lobbying Congress to, to put the fix in, to include those sentenced before 1987. That will include a lot of the Black Liberation, Black Panther, Young Lords, Chicano movement people who have also been in for so long. 
Matulu Shakur, they won't let him out. He has stage four cancer. Parole board, which hardly exists. Two people on the parole board. They say that Matulu answered a phone call from a from a approved number. You have to have your phone calls approved by the BOP. Each number of person in prison calls has to be approved. Matulu answered the phone. The approved person put the whole class. It was a college class. He was teaching. He got denied because he abused his phone privilege. This is what they do to keep freedom fighters in prison. So the three things Biden can do, two of them would make it easy for him. He wouldn't have to sign his name to clemency. Like I said, the Congress is briefed on these avenues of relief that we're seeking for Leonard. I implore each of you to outreach to Senator Lujan's office as soon as possible. Tell them to free Leonard Peltier. Identify yourself if you wish in your community, where you're from. That'll go a long way. When I came up here, I promised myself I would do what I encourage all we white people to do and keep your comments short, but I've already talked for too long. So free Leonard Peltier! Thank you for having me here. よ、暗は下あよて戦後の人にも恋むなしく渡ることなかれワンダフル blessing and a beautiful relationship amen wonderful blessing and a beautiful relationship lenar pertia lenar pertia Lemna Pretia, Grover of Peace, all my relation, all my relation. Yeah.